It's an average weekday morning at Liberia Chimp Rescue and Protection, just outside of Monrovia. And despite the early hour, things are already in full swing. So it's 8 a.m., but we've already had a full day, and we have a full day ahead of us. Um, so these guys all, most of these guys sleep with us at night um, in our bed, and so they wake up at about 5 o'clock. We get up and we play around inside for a while, and we eat, have our bottles and breakfast, and just goof off and play in the inside of the house. And then um, the bigger guys, the middle group, um, plays down here. And when they leave to go over to the pavilion area, then we bring these guys down um, and they play down here. They spend the, their day here, down here. Chimpanzees used to be found throughout the tropical forests of West and Central Africa. But today, only an estimated 150 to 200,000 remain in the wild. In 2010, a nationwide survey in Liberia estimated that only 7,000 of the Western chimpanzee were left in the country. Founder Jenny Desmond says conserving the species has never been important. The role I hope we play is I hope we, we are able to um, take care of these little guys and secure a future for them for their lifetimes. Um, in the bigger picture, I hope we stop getting these little guys and chimpanzees stay in the wild and that Liberia becomes a really great model for conservation efforts and initiatives and we see a lot of success here. The Desmond's commitment to the well-being of animals began with Princess, a rescue dog they adopted back in the States who has been with them every step of their journey. She's lived in like nine different countries now. She's a real comfort to the chimps, especially when they first come in. A lot of times, even before they trust us, they trust Princess. She's amazing. She's an amazing soul. We're so, I don't know, I get, I get emotional thinking about her because she's getting older. So I always worry like, you know, what's going to happen when we don't have Princess anymore? Jenny and her husband opened the sanctuary themselves three years ago. But they say that they couldn't keep the operation running without the caregivers, who provide the chimps with around-the-clock support. I can't think of a more important role um, than a caregiver here. The caregivers, uh, they're so dedicated. I mean, they know every single chimp, they know every single personality, they know every single quirk, and their role is, what I always tell them is, your job is to just give them love, 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 and more love. And that's what they do. And, um, and these guys flourish, and they thrive with that love. Most of the caregivers, like Annie Garpu, are from the local community and live just beyond the sanctuary's perimeter. They take care of them because they don't have no mom. We ask the mom for them. While she has three of her own children at home, Annie will spend several nights a week sleeping at the sanctuary with the baby chimps. <laughs> so in the wild, a young chimpanzee would stay with the mother up until about age five. Um, and they, the first two to three years of their life, they're almost 24 seven, never venturing that far away from the mom. And so we try and have them feel safe and secure and have that comfort that they would have with their mom. So we act as surrogate moms. Annie had never worked with chimps before joining LCRP two years ago. First time I came, all of them, they love me, they start jumping on me, playing, laughing. So I'm myself happy. Science has been able to establish that chimps and humans share nearly the same DNA. And just like people, each chimp has their own unique personality. They're so similar to us. And when you interact with them, even when you're watching them in the wild, but especially when you're interacting with them like the way we do when we're acting as surrogate parents, you see how similar they are to people. Because they're so intelligent, because they're so similar to us, you can see all these things that are similar to humans, but it also makes other animals, I think, relatable in a way that you can't necessarily with other species. They're just so cool and they're all individuals and they're so smart and they're funny and um, they're just really amazing. 
On an almost weekly basis, the sanctuary receives new arrivals, many of whom are incredibly vulnerable and need constant care and reassurance. They've been traumatized, they've been, their mother's been killed, they've been sort of ripped from their life in the forest. We don't even know how long they've spent in some other form of captivity, not being treated well, having a pretty scary, not very good life. And so when they reach us, our job is to not only get them healthy physically, but really uh, most of it's about psychological well-being. <laughs> so this is Pajo. Pajo came in uh, a couple months ago and he was being sold as a pet. He had a dislocated shoulder and a very badly broken arm. He was very severely depressed, um, wouldn't eat, wouldn't drink anything, really didn't want to hang out with us at all. But as you can see a couple months later, I mean, the, the reward really is, is seeing him being this comfortable and trusting. And he's able to use his arm. His arm has healed very well. He's able to climb and play with the other chimps. The younger and more vulnerable arrivals, like Pajo, arrive at Jenny and Jim's house, where they receive 24-7 care from Annie and other caregivers. Right now, with the number of chimps we have, it's just exponentially more chaotic. Um, having them in the house means you're just, you're never off. The nights are long, they wake up a lot. Um, all the chimps are at different levels of, of progress. So some of them might wake up multiple times a night and, and need something to, to drink like a bottle. And some of them might just wake up and, and be anxious. Um, some of them might sleep through the night. When they are a bit bigger and more confident, they are moved to an enclosure with other chimps just down the road. And as they get older and they get more confident and they start acting like, you know, rambunctious um, toddlers, more than toddlers, like when they're, you know, getting really uh, feeling like they can adventure, go out and adventure around, um, then we integrate them in with this larger group of chimps who are a little bit older and then they start living with chimps 24 hours a day. But some of the group are in an in-between phase, confident enough to hang out here during the day, but still want to go home to Jenny at night. So every evening at 6 p.m., Jim rounds them up, puts them in his car, and drives them home for bedtime. The day-to-day -day rewards are just seeing these guys make progress and become happy. I mean, turn from traumatized, Babies with broken arms who lost their moms and are, are orphaned and won't eat and won't, won't even look at you or let you touch them, to happy, thriving, excited, social babies playing with other chimps. I mean, that's the reward. This work has become a family affair, but conserving the future of these animals takes a full-time commitment. Ahead expanding the family circle in the fight to save the western chimpanzee.